Here's a list of all the SEO terms I'm going to be covering in today's video. Feel free to use the chapters to skip around and look at whatever terms that you feel necessary. Let's start out with title tags. Title tags are on search result pages and they help companies describe what the page is actually about. This is very similar to a heading which we're going to discuss next, but the only difference is that search result tags or title tags are only on the actual Google search results page and they describe what that page is all about. So headings are on the actual website page and think of headings as like when you're reading a book you have um, large headings that describe what the actual chapter is about and then you have subheadings that talk about more specific detailed parts of the chapter. Now headings on websites rank from H1 to H6 meaning heading 1, heading 2, etc. And when you have the largest heading, H1, that's going to be the most broad descriptive um, categorization of the actual website content. Now, as you move down, you're going to get more specific. And by the time you're at H6, you should be, you know, talking about very specific details on the website page. Meta descriptions. So meta descriptions are what you see right after the title tag on the Google search result listings. So you'll see the title tag, that's the big blue link talking about what the website page is. The meta description is simply the description of what the page is about. So when somebody searches something into Google, they have all of the listings and then they have a basic description. Uh, they could only see about one to two sentences of this description, but it's going to be very important for allowing users to easily navigate through site pages and find the exact page that they want to look at. Okay, keywords. Chances are you've heard of keywords before when it comes to SEO, and a keyword is essentially words or phrases on the website that allow it to be found. So if you wanted to find a website page, you might search something into Google, and keywords are probably what's actually making that search result link with your content. The keywords are specific words or phrases that are on your website that are going to allow Google to link the searcher and you. So for example, if you have the benefits of organic grass-fed ghee on your website, that is a keyword. And if somebody searches benefits of organic grass-fed ghee into Google, uh, the keyword on the page is going to allow Google to say, hey, this is probably a website that might interest them, so let's put it on the search listings. So obviously keywords are very important when it comes to SEO. Traffic. So traffic is the amount of website visitors that you're getting every month. And this is one of the really important metrics that SEOs and web designers are looking at when they're trying to determine if a website's getting more leads, more traffic, more conversions. And this is so important because this is the amount of visitors that are actually making it to your site from Google. So there are two different types of traffic. There's paid traffic and organic traffic. SEOs focus on organic traffic, which is um, traffic that has come from not paid advertising. So not Google ads, not Facebook ads, nothing like that. It comes from simply people searching up certain keywords into Google and finding your website. That's organic traffic. Really quick, if you're liking the video, please leave me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it a lot. And also subscribe to the channel for more web design and SEO content. Okay, links. Links are simple enough. Um, they are those blue outline text on a website or on the internet that when you click it, it references you to another website. It brings you straight to that website or it can even bring you to specific parts of different websites. Links can be in different forms. They can either be completely spelled out like the, the whole URL or the whole website link or it can be um, linked through a button. Anything that simply when you click it, it brings you to another website page. Okay, so now backlinks. Backlinks are similar to links because they are links, but they're a specific type of link. So a backlink is when you reference another website and you actually point people from your website to their website. So you might be asking, why would you do this? And a good example of this could be uh, talking about a recipe for something and then you link to a website that talks about the recipe of that thing. Now, backlinks are really helpful when it comes to SEO campaigns because Backlinks are going to essentially funnel traffic to your website if other people are backlinking to you. So you're going to hear SEOs talk a lot about backlinks and it's very important for other websites to talk about your website and you're going to have people consistently um, coming from those websites to visit your website. 301 redirects. So 301 redirects are a pretty technical part of web design and they're very useful when you are migrating a site. And what that means is 
you're moving one website to a new website and you're basically, you redid your website, you're moving it all over. But the problem that comes when you move a website over is that the links sometimes change. And so you might be asking, if somebody linked to your website or you have a link to your website and then you switch it, that old link no longer works. That link is broken. And so this is where 301 redirects come in. They allow you to fix broken links. So 301 redirects are something that you insert into the website backend and this basically allows the website to tell Google, hey, this link no longer works, let's redirect them to the new website link, let's send the people that clicked the old link over to this new website with a new link. Okay, what's a sitemap? A sitemap is very simple. It's a list of all the URLs, all the website pages laid out in one document. So why might you need a sitemap? Well, it's good for your own purposes to have a list of all the pages on your website, but it's also really important for Google to have. And so Google can find this through indexing, which I just mentioned, but you could also submit it to them um, for faster indexing, faster uh, version of Google looking at the sitemap. And it's important that Google has your sitemap because they want to know the whole structure of your website and the way that it's laid out so that they can better understand it and suggest it to people that are looking for the type of content you're providing. Okay, what's domain trust and authority? This is Google's way of kind of giving you a grade, like imagine you took a test and Google's going to determine, is this website trustworthy? Does it have authority? So you can establish these things by Number one, getting backlinks from authoritative and trustworthy websites. And if you want to just establish it without any references from other websites, you get this by more clicks to your website, more people spending time on your website, more people enjoying the content on your website. And this is just Google's way of giving you a grade, basically. SERP, also known as SERP. So this is the search engine results page. And what this is, is when you search something into Google, you're going to have a whole list of results come up. This is called the SERP. So the top of the SERP is usually Google ads. So these are ads that people are paying to put at the very top of the page. I'm sure you're familiar with them. And then below those are the organic traffic results, which come from basically optimizing your website and you know improving its SEO. Okay, that wraps up all the terms I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. I really hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, again, leave me that thumbs up. I appreciate it so much, and thanks for watching the video. Definitely check out my other videos. Uh, there's going to be so much information to learn more about web design and SEO, and I'll see you in the next one.